but you must have been stories where you've just they still got away or didn't come off or you know can you any any good sort of yarns about that sort of thing yeah i mean you see arsene wenger there mm. you, the number of times that we've heard him in news conferences saying cristiano ronaldo mm -hmm. that, that was one that got away um zlatan ibrahimovic was another but Messi. one of the biggest ones was Me. the yaya toure one when he had a trial in the game against barnet and if you look at the footage he didn't play that well no. in the trial and they ended up not going for him and then yeah look what happened that was a mistake yeah well apparently he didn't pull his weight in the training and he was sort of said well look take me or leave me you know i'm, I'm yaya Torre, even though he wasn't a sort of fully formed world-class player at, the, at yeah. the time i mean you talk about you know when you're keeping you contact information you haven't yeah used but it and then it's happened this is happened. when you've got to be careful as well though because you get to that point where like i said before you know which one which people and contacts you can trust i always have a red flag when i hear a contact say to me i've got 10 clubs interested in this player and the first thing that comes into my head is well, who's the 11th club that you're trying to push <laughs> to get this deal done because it's in his interest or her interest to have 10 clubs interested in their player to to make the the club that they're really trying to sell to we better get a wriggle on then because so they're using you these, effectively they can sometimes yeah but you've got to you know you've got to play the game a little bit there as well and if there is genuine interest then we would report that genuine interest as well well how much influence that has on a buff we, we don't know you know mm. clubs i'm sure are very very you know they're they're very astute in their dealings they will do things their way but there are occasions when transfers are played out more and more now on social media and in the media that certain clubs are thinking who's briefing who here who's briefing this because this is not an accurate representation of what we actually want to do and so it can influence fans as well because you see it on social media oh, Arsenal just get the deal done mm. what are you waiting for just pay the 120 million hold on we, we've got a valuation here 120 million might not be our valuation so we are comfortable where we are we know how much we can afford and we've got other targets that we need to have money for because we can't just keep spending mm. spending spending because we have our budget for this summer so it can't just be if if, if clubs listen to everything that happened on social media they'd be spending a billion mm every single transfer window which is mm. like, what, 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 what i want to ask now is um because these are the sort of questions i know you guys have been sticking in the comments down below um so i'll speak for you um is who do you think in the premier league is going to be the biggest spender so we go top three of course i mean chelsea have, <laughs> have been sort of way in front of everyone the last two windows but um but yeah who would you rank maybe who's going to be the, the third most amount of money spent would you say i, I don't think it's going to be I mean, not in this window Chelsea I think they've done something unique in the last two transfer windows which you'd expect a club to do over a number of transfer windows but they wanted to get a load of business done in two transfer windows spending close to 600 million pounds and then worry about right we need to start selling <laughs> these players it's a lot of money a bit of a position though because you know if you've got a European club not so much a Saudi club if a European club or a Premier League club want to buy their players they feel that they can negotiate a bit more. I mean, we've spoken about them already. I think Arsenal will be up there. The most? Uh, it's difficult to say the most. They'll be up there mm. spending the most. And I think they want to be ambitious and I think they want to back Mikel Arteta, but simply because of the players that they're going for. And the position they're in now as well. Yeah. And I mean, if you're looking at Havertz and Rice on their own, you're looking at the thick end of 150 million. Mm. There. That's a lot of money. That's just those two players. Mm. You bring Urien Timber into the equation, that could be another 40 million if they can compromise on a fee. So you're already touching 200 million. There aren't going to be many teams who are going to be spending more than 200 yeah, million pounds in this the window. The richest clubs now are Newcastle United, Saudi Money, and Manchester City. And we they, haven't even spoken about them then. Uh, really, yeah. Surely yeah. yeah. they can blow everyone well, out of the water. Can't they? they could, but the thing with City is they seem what they do kind of reminds me a little bit of what manchester united did at their pomp under sir alex ferguson it was never really a revolution hmm. every summer it was more an evolution like maybe 
one or two or three players leave, one or two or three players come in. It's never like six have gone and eight come in. They've got to that stage where they're just tinkering with that squad. One position here, one position there. Newcastle United is, is the interesting one because they're the ones who've got the new money now, but they seem to be doing it in an organic way, particularly under the, the stewardship of, of Eddie Howe. They haven't really gone out and said, we're going to be spending £100 million on a player. They have their valuations of players. They have the personal terms and the wages that they'd want to pay a player. And it, at the moment, they're not really moving outside of that. You know, they they seem to be negotiating even now on, on James Madison. They don't want to overpay, whereas Leicester City will be thinking, even though they're in the championship and that might bring the valuation down, when they feel they're dealing with like a Newcastle United, they will feel that they can go higher with their transfer with their, with their transfer fee, whereas Newcastle United do not want to be used in that way. They've got their valuation. They don't want to be used in a way just because all of this money is there. It doesn't necessarily mean we're going to be spending it do you think they'll in a stupid manner. It, it appears it's going to be between Newcastle and Tottenham. And if I think a big factor will be where Madison wants to go as well as a transfer fee, of course. Two ends of the country as well. Again, that's it a is. factor. It is, but you've got a situation where Newcastle United can offer Champions League football mm-hmm. or you can be part of a project, a new project under Ange Postacoglu. And we don't know those kind of talks that go on behind mm-hmm. the scenes, how convincing these talks are for a player. We, we just look at it from, out, from the outside. Of course he's got to go to Newcastle because mm-hmm. they've got Champions League football. But there's other factors they need to think about. But these are the differences between the factors being the club being the pool and the manager being the pool. And I think we've seen that over the years with massive clubs. For example, Manchester United. You've got the club as a stature as Manchester United, one of the biggest clubs or the biggest clubs in the world in terms of fan base. And necessarily their position in the league and in Europe hasn't been ideal really in the last few years. But now you've got a manager like Eric Ten Hag who's Mm. set a project, just like Mikel Arteta at Arsenal, who will speak to the player and well and address what their project is, what their situation is and where they fit into their project. Yeah. That's a huge factor as well. 100%. I mean, Sir Alex Ferguson was the master of that, wasn't he, back in the day? Mm, absolutely. He'd yeah. find yeah. out all he could about the player. He'd know his parents' names and all that kind of thing. I've read about yeah, that, yeah. All of this kind Personal of touches, yeah. Exactly. And so when, can you imagine if you were a player and Sir Alex Ferguson speaking to you and he's trying to convince you to join the club and he's found out mm. various things about you. I'm sure there'll be an element of that with the likes of Arteta and Ten Hag and Klopp and Pep Guardiola as well. If they're saying they desperately want you, it'd be hard to resist that. 100%. I, th- I think, I mean, are there any other subjects we want to talk about? Any other players? We haven't talked about Liverpool at all, the newly promoted clubs. And the, the, I mean, there's probably, we could talk all day, but we, we haven't called day. We've got, <laughs> you've got to get back yeah. to getting on the transfer news <laughs> and, and grooves and tell people what's going on. But, um, I think we've pretty much covered everything, haven't we, Charlie? It's I been, think we it's have. Been a really fascinating chat to have you in, Dom. These are Thierry Aurigny's boots, by the way. He's the mm. one. That yeah, he if you have been wondering, he's the what one these are. that Arsene signed instead of me. What could I do? I think to to wrap up as well, though, if this is okay with you, I want to do a, a real quick fire. I'm gonna I'm gonna Uh-oh. say a name and a team, and in your personal opinion, just need a, a if you think they're gonna happen. So maybe a yes, no, or a maybe. Okay. Try not so to say may- maybe. Sorry. Try not to say maybe for every single one. But from what you've what you've heard of already, so we'll, we'll start listing a few names. Let's start with the big one being Declan Rice. Is this a deal that yes, no, or a maybe in your opinion? Arsenal. Yes. Yes. There we go. That's the first one. Mason Mount, Manchester United. What's just below in a yes, but above a maybe? Okay. So we like this <laughs> problem because you, you get more of probably. an answer out of probably. it. Probably. <laughs> probably. Um, Harry Kane to Manchester United. No. Well, there we go. See, we've not had a maybe yet, so this is okay. Uh, Kai Havertz to Arsenal from Chelsea. Very possible. Very <laughs> probable. <laughs> <laughs> Moises Casado. Are we going to see a Ricedo uh, uh, at Arsenal? Maybe, maybe not. More, <laughs> there we more go. between the no and okay, maybe. Yeah. Um, what else have we I got here? I think Caicedo, the noises I'm hearing is, is more Chelsea with Caicedo. Interesting. You can listen a few names if you, if you want to, if you've got there. I've got well, I, just, I just wonder what's going to happen with players uh, like Jordan Pickford. Jordan Pickford, yeah. is he going to be leave, leaving Everton? I, think he's been I mean, he's United. publicly saying all the things that he's happy at Everton. Yeah. But you've got to look at their financial situation. If a... Bid came in for him. Would Everton be able to resist it or not? 
James Madison to because I've heard more likely Newcastle early on, but I know Spurs have been up there. So every say, single day, I've heard one or the he's other leaning towards Newcastle. He's leaning towards Tottenham. He's leaning towards. This is a call I have to make later on today, which I'm trying to get information. <laughs> so I don't want to commit. Do on we that think one. LK Gundogan will start the season at Manchester City? Oh, yes, no, or maybe. <laughs> um, <laughs> Not asking where he's going. Think, yeah, is he going to leave? Because obviously his contract is. Is coming. Well, I mean. Is he going to start the season at Man City? Yeah. Yes. Well, if he starts the season at Man City, he'll have signed a new contract. Right. Because if he's out of contract. Mm -hmm. So, it's a very difficult one, that, because City want to keep him. And I think this is a, a, there's a lot of players, I'm trying to fudge this one now, there are a lot of players who have been linked with moves away from City. I just wonder if you get in the heads of those players, what's their thinking at the moment? Mm. Is it, I've just done the treble what is and, it and I want to do it again and again and again with City or oh, I've done the treble it's not going to get better than this so maybe a new challenge it, this is the right time for a new challenge you know looking at the likes next of, question carry on you look, look <laughs> the likes of you know Kyle Walker yeah. you're looking at um, who, who's leaning towards wanting to stay at City and sign a new deal Bayern Munich are interested in him Bernardo Silva as well Bernardo Silva but Bernardo Silva this, every single summer for the last two mm. three summers there's been links with him leaving. I just wonder whether this is the, the summer where he actually does leave. City will not stand in the way of players if they want to leave, but they will ensure that they get the right price for that player. Okay, Pep Guardiola. Mm. Because he's done everything at City. He's a bit like the players too. There was rumblings before he, he might be leaving. He's, he's had, he's, I mean, he has his longest ever spell, hasn't he, at, at one club that's yes. been at City. Do we think he will be in charge of Manchester City come August at the start of the next season yes I think so yeah Slight element. no 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 no. <laughs> I just want to just... give myself wriggle room don't I <laughs> yes yes I think this, okay. this is this. these questions man this cheeky you know about this this has just got all the elements of we can, we can just going out. wrong no but going in, wrong all, in all fairness Dimitri. I'll say and then yeah. something didn't happen yeah. no but do people do that to you do you get a lot of stick on Twitter and socials <laughs> I think that's a yes not a maybe of course <laughs> Of course. And what do you do with it? How do you handle that? Do you read it or? Well, I just, m mainly my replies are less of the bald, mate. <laughs> because I'll add an expletive after the bald. 